gold thieves tonight. Let me tell you. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Just got down my machine. Wow, why is this taking forever? Hey guys, we'll begin the stream shortly. I am just getting things set up. Wanted to make sure the stream is working fine before we went ahead with anything. And yeah, hopefully you guys are chilling out and having a good time on a Tuesday. I feel like it's been a while since I actually streamed with you guys where I'm talking, so this, this should be a little bit of fun. Um, yeah, hey, yeah. You know how it is. Could not download. Why well, did not download? Uh, yeah. So here we are again. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So. November 5th what was that like only a couple more that's the about this today and there's only a couple more week weeks until the end of the year just about like eight of them I'd say about half of them are going to be uh, going to be holiday weekends both Thanksgiving leading up to Thanksgiving Christmas and New Year so if you haven't gotten your New Year's resolutions in better get on it you only have a couple more weeks but if you think about it, it's still one sixth of a year left. So there is some time, but not as much time as you think there would be. Let's look at this. Oh my goodness, why is my computer so slow to know it? Four, five, six, cool. Coo, 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 coo. Ooh, I should message my friendos to see if they come. Well, I'm gonna get stuff prepared because I need to, I can feel my throat getting scratchy. So I'll be back in a little bit. Uh, ooh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go enjoy your dinner, Kenny. We'll be back. We'll be back. Uh, uh, uh. uh yeah let me text my buddy oh security update how are you guys doing tonight having a good time doing all the fun things Did you guys have a good halloween Everything is really slow for some reason. I wonder why. Um, hold on, I 
I need to check some stuff. Ah, it's Chrome that's making it slew. Sure. No. Oh, come on. Come on, come on. Damn. It is chugging along. Uh okay, good to know. Let's go back to that. Let's also open up that. And yeah, I just want to make sure the audio is okay for you guys. Everyone chilling out on the listening phone. Um, yeah, we'll begin in a little bit. We'll just have a good time for now, talking it up, waiting for people to join. I'm a little early. It's I'll share around so people can join. You guys share your food? Uh, is that is that what we're talking about? You guys share your, your dinner food? That's pretty generous of you. Pretty darn generous. Whoa, the quality really dropped in the stream. Damn. No, the stream. Uh, oh, 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 thank you, Kenny. I do appreciate sharing food is illegal. Oh, I'll, I'll share you some some cooking tips, right? So, well, let me switch over. Let me get serious about this because we're talking about cooking now. So, I learned how to make panna over the last week, last couple weeks actually, and it's one of the easiest things to make. If you want to impress someone with a nice dessert that's really easy to make. I would suggest panna Basically, it is milk and like gelatin and sugar, and you just kind of mix it all together and then you chill it, right? And it is one of those things that, if done right, is very impressive. It is really easy to mess up, but also really easy to make well, and it's very flexible in that you can add whatever you want to it. I had one recipe and I modified it into two other recipes that came out amazingly great. Um, if I don't say, it, if I do say so myself, uh, it was a it was like a normal cereal milk panna from Milk Bar, the David, uh, what's his name? Why am I blanking? David Holt, David Cho, David, whatever. It's the guy of Momofuku and Christina Tosi, and I modified that into a matcha one and a coffee one, and they're both. Ooh. And this is what I'm calling my fish lips. Ooh. It was so good. So, so good. I have so many more recipes I want to try with that because I bought extra milk. So now I have milk that I need to use. So I'm, I'm making a new one right now. And then uh, it's, yeah, it's it's just so easy. It takes all of like 10 minutes really. And I, I the recipe is basically you get one, one and a quarter cup of milk. You get one and a half gelatin sheets. Gelatin sheets are um, these, it's basically a gelatin kind. There's like powder kind and sheet kind. The sheet kind is a little bit easier to use just because it's not in powder form and so it won't stick to the bottom as much. The thing about that is you have to bloom the gelatin, which is where you put it in cold water for two minutes, uh, just about two minutes. You like mix it around and make sure it's soft and like rubbery, but don't do it too long because if it starts falling apart, then you have to do it over and throw it out. So you bloom the gelatin, you put that in a pot, you put a little bit of the milk in there, and to get the flavor that you want, you, you mix the milk with whatever else. So in my case, I mix it with matcha powder, 
Uh, in the other recipe, I mixed it with instant coffee. You can basically mix it with almost anything. As long as it mixes into the milk pretty well, then you add one like very generous tablespoon of brown sugar, light brown sugar. You add one quarter quarter teaspoon of sea salt. That'll give it a little bit of, uh, it'll bring out a little bit more of the sweetness. Something that people don't know when they're baking is that they don't use salt very much. Um, they think that salt will make it worse. In fact, I would suggest always putting in a little bit of salt when you bake because it brings out a little bit more of that sweetness. So yeah, definitely add in some sea salt in there and then you basically heat it up until the gelatin's... Uh, so you have the milk and the gelatin there. Stir it around, heat it up, put it on medium heat until the gelatin's gone. Then pour in the brown sugar and sea salt, mix those in until it's all dissolved and then take it off the stove Pour it into however many cups you want. You can put it into one cup, you can put it into a couple cups, depending on how many people you're serving. In my case, I put it into kind of like a shallow bowl and then put that in the fridge for three hours at least or overnight. And then when you come back to it, it's perfect. And so if you do it without any flavor, if it's just like milk and sugar, it'll kind of taste like a milk pudding almost. So I would suggest like berries or some type of fruit with it. Maybe a little bit of chocolate if you want. Um, and it's really easy to make. I'm, I'm super serious. It's super, super easy to make. I've made it so many times already that I memorize a recipe. Um, and yeah, but if you have, if you add more flavors to it, like with the green tea, I had mochi and condensed milk because those kind of go well together. The nice thing about green tea is if you don't use the milk green tea, like the powdered green tea and you use instead like matcha powder, it gives a little bit of bitterness. So it kind of expands the flavor from just sweet to a wide wide rainbow of flavors that you can use. With uh, coffee, I use chocolate because chocolate and coffee always go great to get together. So yeah, so now you have two recipes from me about how I impress people. One is biscotti. We've talked about that before. And then the second one is now panna cotta, which is really easy. And I think for November, we'll be talking about food a lot more just because Thanksgiving, I actually want to do some kind of like mukbang type stream at one point. <laughs> just just for fun because i think that would be kind of nuts um kenny says looks fancy did you make pineapple panna cotta no i did not but i probably could now that i think about it you could just um i guess you would have to like kind of puree the pineapple or something yeah i'd have to find a way to incorporate it into the milk so it would work i don't really want to use like fake pineapple flavoring so yeah, I'll have to look into that. And Dwoo Friends Night Stream now is a cooking stream. <laughs> we, Eugene and I were talking about that two weeks ago about how every stream is going to be a mukbang stream where we're just going to eat. And before I started this stream, like the the very first stream of whatever's, uh, we had a a noodle night, a spicy noodle night. It was well. Let me get the noodles first. So we had over Kirk, Vaughn, Mark Taihe, uh, Lynn, Arthur, Eugene, and am I missing someone? Lynn, Aaron. We had a bunch of people over. And basically we cooked up a bunch of these, the fire chicken noodles. And basically, if you've never had these before, it's really, really spicy. Like I would say, um, it's the type of spicy where you will probably feel a little bit bad after eating it and So there's different versions, right? This one I think is like just the normal kind of like spicy one, but there's a curry one. There is a, a Alfredo one, which is really good. There is a like four times spicy one, which is pretty hot and then there was also a Just like the normal one. Anyways We didn't stream it, but maybe going forward we will because there's also supposed to open up a Howling Rays in Pasadena, and I definitely want to to have that on stream because the last time we went there, Kirk and Vaughn got the Howling Ray Plus, which is like their hottest one, and you have to use gloves when eating it because it's so hot, like it'll go into your skin and it'll just burn. 
Uh, I took a bite of it, like a really tiny bite, maybe like that big. It was about the size, like about half the size of a marble, and my mouth was on fire. Like it was hot. Kirk and Vaughn had both taken like full size bites, and no bueno, no bueno. Uh, Lynn says the fire noodle. I don't know what it is called in English, but there's a chicken mascot on the front. Yeah, that's the one. There's a two times one two. Yeah, we had that one. That was not. That was hot. It was all. It was all hot. So maybe we'll do that again. I also have like another uh uh donabe, which is a stone pot, and we can use that for like hot pot or uh, oden or whatever. So we might have a mukbang with that. Kenny says, "Have you tried the two x one? It's insane, especially if you have." fissure tongue i think so uh, yeah you should try it lynn just because it's you know live a little you gotta live you have to be alive uh so yeah that that will probably happen sometime this month because it's thanksgiving i was planning on making banana cream pie for maybe this stream this this friday stream because i have so much extra milk and yeah, I've never eaten a whole pie by myself. Well, I take it back. I mean, I've never eaten a whole sheet of pie by myself. I've eaten a whole pie by myself. That's not a big deal. I always talk about eating a whole cake by myself, like from Portos or something. That would be great. Uh, every every time my birthday comes around, I always think about like, man, I want to eat a whole cake. I've never really done that as an adult. Like a like a you know, as a kid, growing up, you have. You have like a birthday party and you have your cake, but you always have to like cut the cake up and share it with everyone, which is good. Don't get me wrong, sharing is good. But sometimes I just want to know if I can eat all of it, right? Like, could I do that? Am I am I still young at heart enough to eat a full cake by myself? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Afro I says, good evening. Hey, how's it going, Afro? We, no, we, we're, we're starting at 8, so we're still a little bit early. Um, we sign over to the other side you'll see that supposedly we're going to start in a little bit hey egg ramen uh hey moon maze uh yeah so maybe when my my birthday comes around again i'll try to eat a whole cake dreamworks used to give away free marie calendar pies every every thanksgiving like they would give you a full pie and i took you guys don't know this, but I had another Instagram devoted just to me eating in my bathtub because that is something I enjoy a lot. This might be uh, this might be a TMI. So one of those years, they gave me a full Thanksgiving pie, like a, a pumpkin pie, and I just took that into the bath with me. I was sitting in the bath, eating it, and it was the best thing I've ever done. It was the best life choice I've ever made. I kind of wish I had like a big enough bathtub to do that again, but... We had to move and DreamWorks doesn't give pies away anymore, which is a shame. I I don't think there's anything better than getting a pie from someone. It, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good about life. <laughs> Afro, say, Afro says, I want to do a bunch of childish things for my 21st birthday, including eating a Costco cake. See, that's what I'm talking about. You do that. Make sure you film yourself doing it and, you know, take a before and after picture for sure. Because that's, that's what I'm saying. You should do things that challenge you always, right? Like, it doesn't have to always be, like, intense things like running a marathon or, you know, um, staying awake for, like, three days or something like that. Eating a cake from Costco is just as important and just as taxing. And you need to know if you're alive, right? Like, like I, th I think it's, like, in that Cowboy Bebop episode with Spike where he's, like, one eye sees the future and then one eye sees the past he's like i don't know whether i'm alive or dreaming you have to be like spike you have to find out if you're alive um so yeah that's something to keep in mind that's something i think about a lot actually eating eating cakes i'm gonna put back my noodles I picked up some chocolates from the Japanese market because they're on sale. I got this weird salon, the chocolate. It has like 
um, bits of dried fruit in there. I think like cherries. And then this one has green tea matcha, a nice classic. The look, the look chocolate. God, look at it. Look at it. Uh, and then the last one, which I actually had to show my, I had to show my, which one was it? I think this one I had to show my ID for because it had alcohol on it. But I was like, how much alcohol could be in this? Really, like, like less than a less than a tenth of a shot. Like, it's not possible. But let's try it. I'm gonna try it right now while we're waiting. Ooh, look at that box. Look at that nice opening box. There's something about Japanese um, packaging that I really love. They just do it so well. It is a huge waste of everything, but I, I do love the packaging. If, if you ever go to Japan, if you ever get stuff from Japan, you'll notice that they always package things very nicely. You can oftentimes buy things from like the supermarket or department stores to take as gifts when you go to people's houses. That's called kind of like it's it's similar to omiyage, but not. Um, it's a it's a good rule of habit if you've ever if you don't already do it. But when you go to visit someone's house for like a party or if you just go visit them, always bring something with you. Food is always a good idea. Um, so yeah, like at the Japanese market, they'll have boxes of chocolates that it could just be like chocolates like these or other types of boxes like where it's just laid out flat but it's packaged nicely so that when you give it to the other person they think it's it's like a nice uh token of appreciation unlike america where you don't really have those types of packaging it's just like hershey's chocolate it just looks generic and it's not meant to be given to other people japan often has things that they'll they'll package it so that it looks like you can give it to someone so this is the chocolate um Oh, not bad. Not not bad. Oh, that was good. That was a nice smooth mousse. Oh, Canadians would be proud of that. All that mousse in it. Um, but yeah, if you ever go to Yeah, Afro Alex says my family does this too. I've never gone to someone's house empty handed. And you should never. Never go to someone's house empty handed, never go to a party empty handed. Um, it is a good rule of thumb to live by and people like you for it. Uh, and it's not that hard to just like pick up something small. It doesn't have to be anything big. It can just be like a box of pastries. It can be a box of fruit. If you're kind of more on the fruity side, like if they like fruit, 29, um, yeah, and same thing when you go on trips. I don't know if most people do this, but if you go like on vacation, come back with something small for people. It's just polite. I feel like it's just polite. People people need to practice their manners, right? That's what I'm talking about. Uh, what was the type? Back in action, that's what it was. Back in action. Because I feel like it's been a hot minute since I actually had to review things. The last two times on stream it was Eugene uh just out of curiosity would you guys be interested in or who are you guys interested in seeing on stream is there anyone in particular I can't guarantee I'll get anyone but I'm just curious to see who who you guys are following or what you guys like to see in the meantime we'll do some oh my goodness is it slow we'll do some doodling while we're waiting we still have about 15, 13 minutes until it starts so Maybe I should warm up a little. I haven't really, I did drawing today, but not enough drawing that I feel comfortable just knocking something out. Ay. Uh Oy, why does that keep happening? Why don't you go <laughs> oh this is something fun. So the last time on Friday stream, we were playing Pokemon. Well, I'm going to call Pokemon Detective. Basically, someone tells you the name of a Pokemon and the other person, the other people around you have to describe it to you. And it's kind of like you're a sketch artist for a criminal investigation. So someone give me a, someone um, describe a Pokemon to me in the chat and I'll try to draw it. Don't tell me what type of Pokemon it is, just describe it and don't, 
the rules of the game are simple. You can't use... Uh, how should I say this? You can't specifically describe it by saying like, it is this... Da -da 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 -da. Like, if it were something like a Bulbasaur, you can't say it is green and is four-legged. You have to kind of use other ways to describe it. So I would say like, oh, it's like a... It's like a turtle with a garlic on its back or something like that, right? Like, but instead of it being a turtle, it has like a frog face and yeah, like if it was if it was a ponytail. Well, as a ponytail, you could say it's a horse, but that would make it super easy, I guess. I guess I guess you can use animals to describe it, but you can't describe it using other characters that already exist. Like you couldn't say. You couldn't say it's like spirit, like whatever. Just try to describe it in a way that if you saw it on the street and didn't know what it was, like if you had to just visually describe it to someone. Um, but yeah, give me, go, go for it. And then while we're waiting, we'll play that game a little bit. Just describe a Pokemon to me. Um... I'll try to draw it. I'm not I'm not very good with Pokemon after 150, so it should be an interesting, fun, a big rock. Uh, what type of is it like a boulder or is it like more obsidian? A big rock. It takes to the side. Blue rock, very tall. So it's like a. Does it have legs? Did did the poke did the did the rock have legs? Was it bipedal? Did it roll around? Did it... Imagine you're a store owner and you have to describe this thing breaking into your store to the police. That's that's how you describe it. So you have to... You have to kind of give as much information as possible without exactly saying the Pokemon, I guess. Has red nose, has arms and legs. Is the is the nose also made of rock? Does it have a big nose? It has a big nose. Maybe it's like a ruby at the end of its nose. Um, red nose, arms and legs. Are the arms and legs made of rocks? Made of rocks too. It's a rock, but I don't think I've ever heard. I was thinking like golem or something, but it's, it's tall. 
tall. That's my Pikachu for a scale reference. Oh god. Um okay, tell me more about the Pokemon. What uh describe like it's Am I am I getting hot? Am I getting cold? Is it am I Kind of like on the other stream where we can tell you where I was talking to Arthur and um, Rico about it. Like if we're getting hot or if we're getting cold. If there's something else that we're missing. Kind of like how we describe Ray Rayquazar as a missile made into a dragon. Or um, apparently it's not tall. It has no mouth and no, and it has ear hole. It has no mouth and it has ear holes. What the heck? But it has a big red nose? Is this like that caveman guy from the old cartoon show? <laughs> With the caveman that has, he has a club that he flies around. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? He looks like, he has like a big nose like that. He has like an eyeball. It's like that. He has, um, he has like really long hair like that. He has a hand that comes out. I don't know what the arm looks like, but it's basically an arm that he carries around a club. And then he flies around with like a cape on. Like when he flies, he uses his club. Like that. And it's like, woo! Dude, I, I don't know. Has no mouth and nose, ears, and nose is a human nose, no hands or feet, just rock limbs. What? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> okay, we'll leave that one there. Uh, we'll do another version of this guy. A tall rock, a big rock, with no hands, no feet, uh, no, it has a nose, big nose. It has eyes. I imagine the eyes are going to be like tiny because it's a rock or something. Wait, is it no hands or feet? Just rock limbs? So he has like more rocks on rock. He, he's the exhibit of rocks. He's like, yeah, I heard you like rocks, so I made you more rocks. It's a rock playing rock music. I heard you, I heard you really like rocks. Him and his rock guitar, rocking out. Duck version. Wait, so he, he literally just has rocks for everything? I'm like, what is this? What? <laughs> Other than the guitar, I'm, is he? Am I getting close to it or? <laughs> I actually kind of like this guy. Just got, hey, what, Eldrick Scribe? He's trying to draw a nose pass. Nose pass? I think yours is a duck version. Kind of had stubby rock legs, and you might have, have it. Stubby rock legs. Let's give him a knee. Oh, yeah. We'll have the other one sticking out because he's a, a, a. Oh, no, it should be. Yeah, he's, one's on top of the amp, of course. And then there are ones like that. Oh, I colored that bad. Badly.
Oy, all the colors are really bad. I did not color this or shade it properly. Things aren't popping out. Everything just mushing together. Oy, that's not looking good. Um, did everyone see Overwatch Diablo Cinematic? Hey, hey, Kevin. All right, what type of po it's almost eight o'clock. What type of Pokemon? What Pokemon was it? I'm going to name him. Um, uh, I'm going to name him Jimmy Hendrock. That's why I think they called him because he played rocks and he's made of rocks. Or Stone Stone Henji Stone Henji Stone Kenji Stone Kenji. I think there's a pun there too. Uh, nose pass. Nose pass. I don't think I... Well, it's a good thing I never played Gen 4. Because I don't know what that is. But let's look up nose pass really quickly. Nose pass Pokemon. Oh my god. You could have said he looks like a, a Moai. The Easter Island dude. This guy is awesome. I love him. I think this guy's great. I'm gonna put him down in the corner. <laughs> I I wasn't that far off, I guess, right? Well, I I wouldn't say I'm on it, but I was also not too far off. Okay, 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 okay. Let me just check my email real quickly for some stuff because I have some important emails to send out. No emails. Okay. All right. It is 8 o'clock, so you guys know what time it is. Oh, let me close down. Oh, nose pass. Hey, what's up, Ansberry? Hey, guys, it is 8 o'clock. Welcome back. It's DJ D Woo on the ones and twos, dropping some knowledge on the airwaves and YouTubes. Show me your shots and cuts. But before that, let's get to the joke book. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've been here. Welcome back, guys. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here, and I appreciate that. So, let us start with a joke. Wait, I think we told that one. Ah, oh, I think we did, actually. Damn it. Oh, here's a great one. Here's a great What do police use to arrest pigs? What do police use to arrest pigs? While you guys are doing that, I'm going to make sure that I download all the files for today. I think we have seven total. Nice. Um, what do police use to arrest pigs? They use ham cuffs. Ham cuffs. <laughs> oh, that is good. That is so good. Okay, yo, that's good. that's so good. Welcome back, guys. If you haven't been here before, um, basically every Tuesday I look at people's storyboards and their portfolios, and then I comment on them. I'm coming at this from a action adventure storyboarding perspective versus comedy or feature. I have a little bit of familiar familiarity with all of them, but my expertise is probably in action adventure. That means the shots are going to be a little bit more dynamic. The posing and acting will be a little bit more natural. And the way you choose your shots and your compositions are very important as well. And so those are all the kind of things I'll be hitting on. And as we go through it, I'll try to make the concepts of these things very clear because I think storyboarding has a lot of different perspectives to it that you kind of need to know. There's like the technical drawing side, then there's like the cinematography side, then there's acting, and then there's story. And you kind of have to be good at all of these things. So for me to just say, this is the one thing you need and you'll get a job or this is the one thing you need to be good at, it's kind of, it's it wouldn't be honest to me. So uh, let me try to paint the big picture for everything and try to present it in a way that it's understandable for everyone. So, Let's just dive right into it. If you guys have any questions, just post them up in the chat as usual. So we have Rebecca Jin's boards, Egg Ramen. Oh, oh 
sweet, it does. So I've never seen this before. Oh uh, shoot, hold on, let me switch over to the other one. Um, I've never seen this before, so it is what it is. Uh, we'll pitch through it really quickly and then I'll go back and review it. So we start on a hamburger and danger sign, hand comes in. <laughs> Panel uh, brains, brains, Empty. What do you mean empty? Stupid thing. Hey, Emmett, give me your gun. No way. How do you have ammo already? Uh, <laughs> oh, that's nice. Ah, runs over. We'll never make out this right. Just give me the gun. No, Ash. Let go. Oh, what happened? Jumps up. Kicks him. Pat. Pat, pat, pat. She's wasting the ammo. She's wasting the ammo. Pat, pat. Knock him down. Hey. Oh, 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 oh. Brains, brains. Brains. Hurry up and shoot. What are you doing? Brains. Get away. Pat. Did he get shot in the head? Whoa. Head shot. Well, it's falling. <gasps> ha! Hey, 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 hey. Rumbling, rumbling, rumbling. And then they get eaten. Okay, cool, 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 cool. It's a nice little sequence. There's some nice acting, some nice drawings. Um, I think story-wise, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, they are fighting zombies and. They, we kind of see their character relationship, which is pretty interesting. I think story-wise, you might want to, the climax of it where he shoots the zombie in the head as it falls, I, I didn't quite understand that bit um, per se. Like he freezes up for some reason, I'm not sure why he freezes up and then he overcomes it, and I'm not exactly sure how that happens either. Uh, this cut also is a little bit confusing where the zombie gets knocked away and shoots it, but um, we'll get to that in a little bit. But overall, I think the story is pretty straightforward and uh, pretty pretty easy to follow, which is, which is good. That's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Um, Drawing-wise, I think you have some really nice uh, poses and some nice acting. Sometimes things get a little scratchy, and I'd, I'd say be careful about that. Like, uh, I know there are a couple artists that do draw like this in storyboarding, and they their work is good because it's expressive, and I think your work is very expressive too. I don't know how many directors would always uh, encourage this type of like finish because a lot of times what will happen is we'll send the work overseas and where when we send it overseas there is a huge kind of risk you're taking when you send over boards that aren't really tight or well laid out if you have a good overseas team they'll fix it and make it look perfect they'll put everything on model and they'll it'll actually sometimes come out better than what you sent but a lot of times you won't have those type of teams or you won't have people overseas that are, that are super talented so they might just trace off of your drawing right and that's kind of a risk that's kind of like what you have to what all directors are always thinking about when it comes to 2D animated shows. Like, do I want my boards to be tighter or do I want it to be more energetic and action oriented and kind of expect the overseas team to take care of it? So what I mean by like a little bit more finished is this part here, like you do, you draw out his arm perfectly in these other shots. And then all of a sudden it kind of just like becomes like a, a flat noodle. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but you might want to kind of like describe that a little bit better same thing with some of these um shots like i get that 
these guys are getting shocked, but it's not entirely clear what is getting shot in this specific scene because it looks more like graphic overlay. So in, in like an anime, this would kind of be okay. Like, or where'd it go? Oh, wow, everything is so slow. Yeah, like, like an anime that might be fine to do just because uh, there's a little bit more leeway with um, animes. But if, if you're working on like a kind of a, more of an American show, I guess, you, you need to be a little bit more descriptive of what's getting shot. And I guess this kind of applies to like almost, or it kind of applies to most of what I'll be talking about, I guess, is just making sure it's clear for the people who are looking at your work what is actually happening. So if this guy's getting shot, like show it, his head getting shot, right? Like. You can have it be like a big graphic like that, but make sure it is on him. If it's in the background, like over here, make sure it's in the background so his arm will overlay it. Also make it smaller because it's in the background. If it's just exploding in the air for some reason, that needs to be made a little bit clearer, but I'm not exactly sure why it would just be exploding in the air. Right, so this stuff, you just kind of need to make it a little bit clear what's happening um some people like to draw out like bullets coming in too sometimes they'll draw bullets coming in like this right like that and that can sometimes help uh i'm also not exactly sure why there's this yellow stuff at the bottom here uh if it's a different type of bullet that is something you kind of need to explain otherwise just keep with the green between all of these or the guy's getting shot down here make sure it looks like he's getting shot right now it's very graphic in its in its um depiction and that is fine for very stylized shows but um it doesn't always sell the idea does that make sense like i guess uh, an analogy would be a good analogy would be like this right like if i drew something like this Um, we would all think that's a cake, right? Just because we we, are, we kind of know the general shape of a cake, we kind of know um, what cakes look like, et cetera, et cetera. We've always seen them drawn that way, and that works. But we want to get to a point where it's distinguishable to most people all the time, right? So you want to, you know, give it a little bit more loving in some instances, like give it a little bit more frosting. And you don't have to go super detailed with everything. You can still simplify things down. Just make sure it's clear as to like what is happening. Like these graphic shapes are okay. Just make sure it looks like it's actually hitting the person. Like you can just pat like that, right? Or the nice thing about your shapes is that they, they, they're appealing. You actually design your shape. So that, that helps a lot. But like, yeah, like this yellow stuff, I'm not exactly sure what that is. Um, the way you introduce the characters is a little bit interesting too. This is the first time, this shot is the first time we see the main characters of the, the story. Uh, I would prefer to have them be kind of like a hero shot, like, like this, right? Like I'd rather see this shot first and then go to like a wide shot or something, because I think we want those hero shots. You want to think about like Avengers, right? Like when the Avengers come out, they like land like iron man lands and they like rises up slowly like we want those shots we don't want to see iron man do something super far away and then we see him rise up that that ruins the reveal i always like to have my storyboards reveal something like you're always hiding something and then you reveal it hide reveal either hide it with the cut hide it with like the staging hide it with someone coming in but always revealing things like when you reveal things it's always super cool it always looks good so Maybe I switch around the shot. So start with this one and then go to this shot, right? But even this shot, you can kind of make it even, you can do more of a reveal. Oh God. Oh God. 
right? So what I would do with like this type of shot, and again, this is cool. I like I like the the design of it. What I would start on is I would start on the gun, right? It's like dish, 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 and shooting out this way, shooting kind of like just a little bit past cam, a little bit past the camera. I'm not exactly sure how this. Gun works, but right. So we're we're getting these shots past the camera. Pa, 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 pa. Right, pa, 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 pa. So that's panel one. Then what happens is he'll swing the, the gun past the camera. No star. I have this I have a hotkeys on my storyboard pro that are a little bit different than Photoshop, and so I keep getting like mixed up. God bejesus. So I keep getting mixed up between the two, basically. That's the problem. Right, but the idea is we start on the gun, it's still shooting this way, pat, 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 but the camera swings around to the side. Stop Photoshop, why are you doing that? <laughs> Right, so the camera swings this way, and we'll truck out at the same time. So now we have not only the cool shot, right? We have this cool shot of the guy shooting toward camera. Maybe give it a little bit of shot on that, right? So we start with this shot here, one where shooting toward camera. Then the count, then he kind of like swings the gun to the side and it trucks out. And then we, this is panel two here. This is panel two. And then this is panel three. We end up here in that shot of him in the full shot to reveal him, right? Da, 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 shooting stuff. And so that's kind of like what I mean by revealing, right? You want to hide things or you want to show the information to the audience in a way that is entertaining and fun. Um, just as like a note, be careful about your perspective. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Uh, again, I think you might be just doing like a, like a Imaishi thing or like a kill a kill thing where everything's like super bent. And if that's the style of the show, that's fine. Otherwise you will probably have to kind of like make sure all your backgrounds work and whatnot. You know, like this is a ground plane. That's a back wall. That. Uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what type of shot you're looking for because let's say we follow this, right? This is your background here like that. Like, let's say this is the ground plane. These two, wherever this goes and this goes, they have to hit the same horizon line at some point. So I would assume it's something like that, right? It's like that. Then. This one goes like that, like that, that, right? But then that also means that this needs to bend like that, right? It has to bend something like that. So um, this guy needs to be more, much more like that, 
right? You would see even less of him because it's you would see it would be even more of an upshot because of the the way perspective is set up, right? So, uh, my this would be a lot bigger too. The gun would be a lot. The gun would be a lot bigger. It'd be like. that body right so if you're going to do those crazy extreme perspectives be consistent about it um, otherwise try to keep your perspective not so crazy unless like I said it's a style thing um, but yeah just just keep that in mind too William says, are the red, green keyframes in Storyboard Pro used pretty commonly? Are they hard to figure out? I feel like that is just kind of the, the industry standard now. It's not too hard to figure out. Storyboard Pro is a pretty straightforward program. Uh, if you use the timeline mode, the the timeline mode will always have the, the green frames indicate your start position. And it will always have the red as your end position. So no matter what, that will always be the case like that um, any any in-betweens like let's say the camera swings over here it'll have a blue one it'll just be blue instead um, yeah I think your poses are really fun again just be careful with some of the drawings um, I, I like your personal work a lot uh, I like the stuff that you draw on there because it's very expressive and stylized Going into storyboarding for like action storyboarding, you kind of need to like this stuff, right? Like this is more timid. Egg Ramen says, I, I wanted to convey that one character is more timid and that's why he freezes up later. What would be a better way to convey that? Uh, we'll get there in a second. That's a good question. So getting back to like, if you want to do storyboards for action adventure or if you want to do it for TV of some sort, this doesn't really work. Like this is a good shorthand for showing someone that he's like shaking it, but it's also it also can be super confusing to the overseas team or even to people here as to what that is actually happening. So when I, I was thinking about this the other day, like how if I had to describe to someone like what level of technical skill you need to get to to get a job in animation like how how good do i need to draw to work in action adventure storyboarding my solution or the way i would describe it is you need to get to generic anime style or gas right generic anime style and what i mean by that is generic anime style looks like if you took the voltron characters and just strip them down to without their their armor right like i think i'm not this is not I'm, this is not a knock on voltron at all i in fact it's actually the opposite in that voltron the way the characters are set up are really easy to turn and draw and to learn anatomy all right let me voltron legendary defender right the way that it's they the characters are designed is similar to how the anatomy works And that was not that was not just by random. They they chose it for a reason, right? Maybe that's a complicate too complicated. The way they the way they decided is because they need to have these characters moving around in very intense action sequences, and the the way that the armor contours to their body should be similar to their muscles, right? Because once you once you get to a certain level of drawing, um, the muscles really will help you a lot. And because that's something we all practice all the time, and most people are kind of constructed the same way, muscles are a good guideline for describing characters turning, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe we'll just go with that because I can't find a better one, right? So when I say like think about Voltron as a like a template for drawing, I mean it because these shapes that they use for the muscles and the way that they describe their body is very, it's it's simplified, but it's also anatomically correct, right? Like that's that would be a good leg. And they, the way they draw it and the way they have these things wrap around like that, 
is very similar to the muscles themselves. When you think about the thigh, there's like a muscle that runs this way, right? There's like that muscle that runs inward. Your muscle, it bends out like that because of your quadricep. And then your knee too is very similar to how they draw it in here. So if you can kind of like look at their bodies and think about their muscles too, because like this is kind of the rib cage, right? This is like the rib cage right here. This is the top of the pelvis. Like a belt is a good way to indicate like the way the, the pelvis turns, et cetera, et cetera. S same thing with like the armor up here, right? The armor is like the shoulder, right? If you think about the shoulder like that, et cetera, et cetera. There are some spots where it doesn't exactly work, like the collar here. But overall, this is a good kind of template to aim for, right? And this, these proportions are a little bit stretched, but they work for a lot of things. Like you could easily take one of these characters, right? Even if we just traced over them really quickly like this. And then, you know what? Just go like this. Right, like he still works for the Batman. Their their proportions aren't exactly the same because Batman's a little bit beefier up top. But once you kind of understand how to draw them anyways, you just increase the chest size a little bit. You might taper down, you might beef up the thighs a little bit more. But overall, you, you now have yourself, you can all kind of draw Batman a little bit, right? So it's like, uh, Egg Ramen says, so generally less stylized. Um, I'm just saying a lot of the action adventure shows require a level of skill at drawing the body anatomically correct. And if you're having a hard time understanding how to draw a body anatomically correct, or if you're not sure like what type of style to have, Voltron is like a good, is like a good thing to start from. I'm not saying it's the only one, but it's a good one to start from Voltron, Korra, uh, Young Justice, all those have Young Justice, and it could be because a lot of the same people work on it, but again, you can see that there's like a similar style between this and God, I just wish it would open the you can see that it's kind of a similar style to Voltron, right? Like Superboy here could easily be Lance in Voltron, right? And again, that's that's by design in that it's a little bit easier to draw. People know how to draw muscles. It's just simplified anatomy to some extent. Uh, let me think. What's another show that had? Even like Spider-Man cartoon show. Let's just type in Spider-Man cartoon show. Even some of these older ones that you can still see some of the same line language. You can see some of that stuff. So. Again, the, the idea with saying that you want to get to like a general anime style or gas is that there are a lot of shows that use that style and to be able to draw on it will allow you to work on multiple shows very quickly, right? Like you could easily see if you trace over this. The proportions aren't exactly the same, but you can start to see that they actually use similar Lang language for these characters, right? Say they're semi-proportionate, semi, semi, I guess, well, it's, whoever drew a Spider-Man didn't draw it so well. Semi-similar shape language, right? What was the arm look like on this? And I'm I'm kind of just tracing over this right now. Like 
I'm just embellishing it with whatever the armor pieces are. I don't even know what they are, but but you can see that there's like a generic style that you need to hit. Boom, right? So, <laughs> uh, hey, swear whoops. Am I drawing? Yeah, like, so the idea, again, just to reiterate what I'm saying is, it's, you don't have to hit it perfectly. You don't have to hit um, Lance perfectly. You don't have to hit Spider-Man perfectly, but it's that generic style that can apply to all these shows that you want to aim for, right? And when I said Voltron, I didn't mean it because Voltron is generic. I mean, it's because it's one of the better looking shows where you have a lot of, a lot of different, uh, there's a lot of material you can work off of. You have different size characters. You have different, you have a lot of action sequences where you can see them moving. They have weapons. There's a lot, of, the way the armor is drawn kind of like maps to the body. It, ro it like wraps with the body. So it'll help you understand form. So there's a, and there are also some anime um, influences in here that you can apply to other things and whatnot. But the idea, again, with the advice is you just want to get to a place where you can apply to anything you want and apply to other shows with it. And so I think the problem with this drawing right here is that his head is too big, right? So you, you take the knowledge of how to draw and then you just apply it differently. Right. I'm Shiro. I fly the black line. Yeah, I'm upset. Oh, that body. Oh, what? Another good way to find out if your drawings are bad is just flip them, and that is really bad. Whatever. Well, we'll deal with Shiro later. But now that, does that make sense to you guys? Um, to get to that technical level, like or the type of the type of technical level you should try aim for, if you want to start being serious about working in the, in the industry. Um, again, this drawing is very expressive. But I would like to see a little bit more clarity in the in everything, I guess. That's not mm, Chunky pen. I'm missing the right pen, so I feel like this pencil is not correct. It's because the flow is so low. There you go. Right, so let's say this is the guy. Um, Eldrick Scrab says, This is a bit of a relief for me since this, this is around where I'm drawing. That's good. Now what I really need to work on is more dynamic poses, conveying backgrounds, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Yeah, it's it's a whole process. So I'm not going to try and draw the gun because the gun's super complicated, but let's just So if he's actually like shaking it up and down, we kinda wanna see what his arm is how his arm is holding it. Right? You want to add in a little bit more detail into what's happening. Again, unless this is stylistically a choice, otherwise So this might be like pose one and then pose two will be down here.
right? We want to see. We actually want to see the the drawing. Right. So you have, you would need to kind of show what he's holding. You would need to show like how his hands work, etc. So you need to show him actually shaking the damn thing instead of the shorthand, which is, like I said, if it's a stylistic thing, that's fine. Otherwise, show it all. Um. So now that that point has been made, see, this is a cool reveal. Like I like this reveal of the shot. That's cool. That's cool too. Um, be careful of your jump cuts. Again, it would be nice to see like faces here. I like the shaky camera. That's kind of nice. Let me get shot. That's cool. I like that. Yeah, it's things like this where I'm like, I'm not sure what that is. Um, make sure to just draw that in exactly. This part, I was confused, like, it looks like he shot he, and set something on fire, but if it's just like one shot, separate the shots out, so it's like, pat, 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 pat. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can you... Kenny says, can you maybe in the future invite a guest storyboard artist who is from feature and discuss the similarities and differences? Yeah, I'll go ask someone. Um, I, I didn't get the first part of your message, egg ramen. I just got the, and just clean up drawings more. It's not necessarily that the drawings have to be super clean. It's just that they have to be clear. I think you're using a lot of like shorthand stuff to get away with something like, like this, right? Like what happened here? Did the guy backflip? Did he, he just kind of turned into a bunch of squares and that works for like anime shows but we can't really do that here. Same thing with this, like he just kind of fell away. You you, you really need to spell out the action and what the person is looking like. So he's more timid um, versus the other guy. I think if you really want to sell the timidness, oh. Yeah, I don't think you can post links in the chat. If you really want to sell the timidness, I think you would have to have him like not even shoot at all from the start and just kind of be like really frozen up. Because it doesn't seem like he has trouble shooting zombies. It's just it's just that in that one instance, he didn't shoot. So maybe it's just him not shooting the whole time and kind of be like, oh, I don't know if I can. And the guy's like, give me a gun. He's like, no, I don't want to. Like, I'll do it. I'll, do it. I'll shoot him. I'll shoot him. And then he doesn't until the very end. I think the best thing could happen is like the guy is just timid and he doesn't want to shoot the whole time and the guy's like give me your gun he's like no no and then he gets the guy his friend gets attacked by the zombie and the timid guy has to shoot the zombie off of him but he doesn't know if he can he's like all shaking and then just as the machine gun guy is about to die the timid guy shoots him and we see him overcome his timidness because he had to save his friend right that would be like a good beginning middle end situation with the with being timid versus being um, overly zealous, right? Like he saved his life. And that was enough of an impetus for him to overcome his shyness. So yeah, and then that ending would be fine. So good stuff. I think there's really expressive expressive um, poses and you have a good sense for a shot choice. I think just making sure you're clear about your drawings and making sure um, you watch your perspective and making it a little bit more, I guess, readable. All right, let's keep moving because I, I didn't know it was 840 already. That's crazy. So this is Brawl by Q Jong. We start on a house and then we cut in really quickly then truck out from that. Brawl. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, they're just like fighting each other the whole time. 
pound and cross. We see a bunch of pictures of them fighting and getting old. It's like up meets Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I would assume. Pound and over. Ooh. TV sound, click, 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 click. Ah. Sleeps. Oh, someone goes in front. Hey! Huh? You... You just... Oh, God. No, go away. Hmm? No, uh... Grabs the sugar. Can't see. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Dear. Yes. Yes, another home run. Mm. And then that's it. Okay, I can't have imagine. I can imagine where that's going. Uh, I think this is a good setup. Um, it. The story is going in the right direction. Uh, I don't have any problems with that. Uh, I don't think you need to show the outside of the house. It felt like a weird cut going from this to this. Like, it was such a hard, like, we went from, like, a very wide shot to a very close-up shot, and I wasn't sure why, and then we truck out from that. You can just cut this first shot, start tight on their picture, truck out, we reveal the title, we pan over, we see them fighting all the time. I'm not sure why, but that's pretty funny. This is a nice way to get here. Click. That's fine. You might want to go what he's clicking towards. If he's like clicking once, then you might want to see the TV screen with the baseball. So start setting up the tension with the baseball, right? Like, if he's going to watch baseball, maybe it's like bottom of the ninth, two outs. And that's why it's important. He wants to know who's winning. Then go to the dog yawning. All right. This shot feels a little weird. You need to watch out for your perspective. But this is what I mean, right? So maybe this could be the shot after he clicks it. Um, what I mean by watch out for your perspective is... Let's draw these out a little bit. Something like that, right? So if this is the horizon line for the, the way you set things up, then wherever the horizon line hits, that's where characters are in relation to it, right? So if we were to look at this from the side, this is the TV right here. If it hits, this blue line is the horizon line too, right? And then if we were to draw out where this guy is, his face would be down here like that. Watching TV. Somehow he, he went into the ground, right? He's supposed to be on his couch, but now because of the way the horizon is drawn, he looks like he's in a hole. So when you think about perspective and where you lay your horizon line, this is your horizon line, you have to think about where that hits things. So if we want to keep the guy, so if we want to have this OTS, this over the shoulder shot of this guy, and you want to have the TV here, then we need to think about where that horizon line is going to hit this guy's head versus the TV. Does that make sense to everyone? All right, so if we're going to keep this, this is fine. Maybe just draw his ear out a little bit better. Right. Okay. So either this is a guy's head, either we need to raise him up so that where 
cards are drawn so that he is hitting where that horizon line hits the person is at the correct level somewhere around his crotch or if we're going to keep his head here like so we need to make sure that the horizon line is up at his high up at his eye line or somewhere where the TV would make sense. So I think it would make sense for him to be looking down at the TV in this shot, right? So this is basically how I lay out my shots like this. Like I'll look at the type of shot I want first. I can bring him in a little bit like that. And then I'll draw out the, where I think the TV will be. Like I'll draw out where the perspective line is and then I make the TV match up to that. Um, the TV seems awfully small now actually. So I'll, what I'll do is increase the size of the TV like that. He has a nice fancy flat screen now all of a sudden. Baseball. See a little bit on the top of the screen. Table like that. I think we could probably lower this a little bit more actually. Right, so it looks some that would kind of be a little bit more reasonable to guess the stop the TV. Right, but even then, it feels a little bit too. It doesn't feel right. I think. I think it needs to be higher, that's why I like that. And this needs to be more like that. Right, so it looks a little bit something more like that now. Maybe there's been pictures back up here. Maybe there's like, well, it's Nintendo Switch or something. Maybe a plant in the background. Whoop, plant. But does that make sense to you guys as to why I changed the horizon line? Why I moved this guy in? We want to make sure that the perspective matches. We want to make sure the horizon line, this line up here, is in correct relationship to everything else spatially. So anytime you have a, anytime you're like drawing backgrounds or something, figure out where your horizon line is and figure out where that's going to hit on your characters. If you want it to hit on this guy's head, then you need to raise up the TV or you need to lower the TV. If you want it to stay at the TV level, then you have to raise up the guy so that you see his crotch and whatnot. Does that make sense? Understanding perspective is important as well because when you get to more crazier shots where you have like moving cameras and characters of all different sizes, you need to keep that scale relationship um, very clear. So an easy way for people to tell if you are good or bad at storyboarding is if your characters look like they're sinking into the ground or if they look like they're too big for the scene, right? This is a funny shot. I like this. Like I said, you probably could have played up the, the, the suspense of the fight or the, the ball game earlier. Um, this is a cool shot. I would suggest having her walk out completely here so that she clears the frame and then cut to this shot because it feels a little bit like a jump cut right now. It feels a little bit jumpy. So I'll have her walk out completely in this shot and then she goes away, turns around and then, uh, that's great. That's good. I like that. Um, this is definitely a jump cut. A jump cut is where someone's silhouette 
from one shot to the next is very similar. Um, yeah, either go... This is a weird shot because somehow the camera got in back of the guy and is in back of him right up next to the wall. Technically, the camera is shooting through the wall right now. The camera is literally in the wall shooting out at him in the shot, so that wouldn't work. Um, you might just have to cut closer on this shot itself. Uh, Nintendo. Halloween was good. Didn't eat as much candy, but that is probably for the best that I didn't eat so much candy. I love me some candy, especially some Reese's penises, some uh, peanut butter M&Ms, peanut M&Ms, all that stuff. Also good. Uh, Afro I says, yes, would you say your ability to pick that up just comes with practice? Sometimes I know something's wrong, but not exactly what. Uh, yeah, it just comes with practice, looking at things, drawing things, understanding perspective. The best way to kind of the best way to um, understand and check your perspective is just to figure out where the horizon line is, right? If you have the horizon line, like I said, where it crosses the characters should all be the same. And you can use that to help you with so many different things. So if you have a character like this, right? And we know the horizon line is crossing out his head. We also know that if you draw a door then, then the door... Well, if it crosses this guy here, then even if he's further away back in the distance, we know it will always cross his head at that same point. It will always cross right in the middle of his head. And that is how perspective works, right? But this can also apply to different things. If you know it crosses his head, and let's say he has a suitcase, right? The suitcase is half his height, right? This is a suitcase. So how, how do I draw the suitcase back here now? Like, what you do is you just kind of figure out that it's half his height and you can draw it in the distance now and you can do this for anything once you kind of figure out where the horizon line hits and how it, it relates to other characters you can draw them anywhere in literally anywhere right let's see he's a little bit closer now so this is so then the suitcase is like that big right that is how perspective works you use the horizon line to help you figure out how big something should be. So in these shots where you have these characters, you use it to figure out like, well, it's kind of like that, right? It seems to be a little bit all over the place because there's one that goes this way, like this. Then there's one that goes this way, which doesn't seem to be going to anything. And the way you use perspective in shots like this is that I like to think about where the camera is and how it is pointing to something, right? And how those grid lines end up here. So if the camera is pointing this way, then the, the wall is going to be like that, right? And I would draw the grid lines to match that. And then I'd figure out where that perspective is somewhere, where all these grid lines converge is like the horizon line somewhere down here, right? And then I'd use that to help inform these other parts of the drawing back here. Does that make sense? Grid lines are just there to help you describe the plane of it. And it also helps you to figure out where your horizon line is going to be. So it looks like if we follow this, the horizon line is like way, way, way down here somewhere, right? So if that's the case, it's like way down here. Let's draw this guy a little bit more. He's sitting on the couch, so technically we wouldn't see the arm of the sofa back here. That would be too too much. The sofa would be more like that. This door back, so that door back there needs to be a little bit bigger because either that or they have a super big house. Because where it hits is probably halfway down the door, I bet. So something like that. All right. So all these things will change to match this guy and you kind of have to draw out your drawing to under, start to understand how perspective works. You kind of have to figure out how to convey these things in a room. Like, can you draw a 
Can you draw a chair in this room? Like if you were asked to draw like a perfectly perspective correct chair in like a room like this, could you do it, right? Like what would that take? What steps do you need to do to do that, right? And if you don't know how to do that, then that's where you have to start to learn perspective. You have to understand like, okay, if I need to draw a chair in this room, first I need to find where the horizon line is. First I need to find where all these points converge in one dimension, right? And then the second one, I have to figure out where these all connect. Then once you know that, a chair is basically a box, right? So you have We're making a sofa now. I changed it to a sofa because I'd rather draw a sofa, right? So you use the information you got earlier of where the horizon line is, where the points converge, and you use that to build your sofa. up dragon scales All right so it looks like this All right but you need to understand that's how you need to understand the rules of the perspective of perspective to kind of even start to like build things. All right. So that's that's why perspective is important because it lets you build things in 3D in 3D space. Control shifty, what's up, what's up? How do you make straight diagonal lines like that? Shift key. Um Yeah, I just hold down well Photoshop is terrible for it. Um but basically you you hit one spot like that and then you hold down shift and they you hold down you hit a spot like here, just tap it, and then you tap your other spot, and it'll make a line. Go back. And so you just tap, 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 tap. It's not very good in that sense. Um, if you want it to be like perfectly straight up and down, you just hold down shift and alt, and you go either upwards or downwards, whatever, right? Um, Photoshop is not particularly great at this because you have to kind of like guess where the horizon line is a lot of times. Uh, Storybook Pro is a lot better just because you can hold down shift and then you can drag the line around wherever you want it to. But you just have to get close. It doesn't have to be perfect. It needs to be close. Anyways, getting back to this, this is a jump cut because this guy's silhouette here is very similar to this guy's silhouette down there. They kind of fill almost the exact same space. So when you cut between the two shots, it feels like you're you're looking at the same thing, but then your brain registers you're not, and it gets kind of confusing. The problem with this shot down here as well is that the camera is in the wall. Somehow the camera is shooting through the wall. This is the camera and the guy's head is like right here, but technically his head's against the wall. Like the sofa is right up against it, et cetera, et cetera. It's not, that's not possible. So my, my suggestion would be you can keep the shot cause it's nice for this one, two things. One, just come in a lot closer like that. This would make more sense. Um, because one, it gets rid of the jump cut. Two, you it's more believable that you would be able to be that close to the guy. Once you start seeing the sofa, that's when it gets weird with it shooting through the wall. It's believable that we might be right in back of him. And then also, you need another pose of this without her in it, without the grandma in it. You need to have her walk into this because it the, the action happens too... It happens too quickly, right? She's... He's talking and then he shoes her away, but then all of a sudden she's there. She needs to come in 
we need to see her come into the shot for it to make sense. Walks away. Uh, this is another weird shot going from that to this. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but gets up. Um, this feels a little weird just because she's looking left to right, and then this one she's looking right to left. You might as well just have her come up straight or have her move the chair over here and have her look that way so in the next shot she's still looking in the same direction. Um, keeping your screen direction is important, like left to right, right to left, between shots. I like this. This is really funny. That's good. I like the POV shot. That's fine. This is good too. I like that. And then, yeah. Uh, I'm excited to see what it looks like when it's finished because I think you have a, the makings of a good story. I think you have a good idea about pacing and a good idea about shot choices. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, but there needs to be, it just needs a little bit more polish, like in terms of like not having match cuts, in terms of getting your perspective right. Um, looking at this now, it kind of cuts them off at the waist. You might, that might be a little bit weird. Just get a little bit tighter on the dog. Um, but yeah, I think the story is going to be fun. So can't wait for that. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Let's put that under bro. Huge young. Uh, and we're going to keep moving on. Keep, keep moving on. Do you guys have any questions? Chad says, Reese's P, did I hear that right? I'm dead. Uh, you did not hear that right, but it's all okay. What's up, Dragon Scales? So this is Mimi and the Baby Monitors, storyboard by Rosie Murillo. Wait, have I seen this one before? Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. All right, we're looking at this panel. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, the poor thing. My ears, my poor ears. Hey, Tad, is the bit baby monitor broken? Seems to be working fine. At least on our end. Someone should go check if it's working on mom and dad then. Great idea, Mimi. Thanks for volunteering. Hey, why does it have to be me? Please, Mimi. I'm worried about the baby. No. Pepper Come on, Mimi. Why'd you have to be so selfish? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. You're so selfless. Why don't you go? Hmm. Listen, you little. All right, that's enough. Fighting is going to help, isn't going to help the baby. <sighs> Mimi, Pep has a point. You've been complaining about yours all night. It's only fair you step up and do something about it. All right, fine, I'll go. <laughs> Thank you, Mimi. Walks out. They one's going to step up. It should be the parents. Baby wants out, snoring. <sighs> Snoring, snoring, snoring. Lazy bums. Don't nope. throws at him. Uh, TV auto turns up. Uh, wake up, wake up. Uh. Goes back to sleep. Snoring. Uh, throws the rattle away. Hits the floor. Mm. Looks over at the book. There was a book stop. 1001 Reasons Your Baby Is Crying. Wait a minute. You're suggesting we take care of the baby? Um, is that allowed? Mimi, your heart's in the right place, but we're toys. We're not supposed to be babysitting. Look, I know this isn't part of our job description, but I'm done sitting around. At this rate, she'll be crying all night. After all, it's like you said, Weepy. If we want, if we want to do something, if we want something done, we gotta step up and do it ourselves. Forget it. I'm not changing any diapers or... We'll help Mimi. It may be unconventional, but Mimi's got a point. We can take care of the baby for one night. We don't want to act selfish, right, Pep? Ugh, fine. Hey, Dad. We're gonna need your help, too. Yes, man. Get ready, toys. It's gonna be a long night. Okay, cool. That was a good story. I think it had some... I think all the story beats are there, which is nice. I, we gotta see some character development. We gotta see them have an obstacle and a problem, and they choose to face it. So I think story-wise, I think it's good. I think this is a good start. Um, I'm I'm curious about how it pays off. 
Something I always talk about is that whenever you do storyboards, you always want like a beginning, middle, and end. This has a beginning, middle, and end. Um, it doesn't always have to, the story doesn't always have to finish, but it's always good to have that beginning, middle, and end when you're showing stuff in your portfolio. Having things that are incomplete kind of leaves them feeling like, oh, I don't know if this person can tell a story. I'm not sure uh, if they understand story structure, but this is like a good example of having beginning, middle, and end. Uh, composition wise, I think this shot can probably uh, be a little bit better. Some of the scale, there are some scale issues, but I'm not sure how big each of the animals are, so or each of the stuffed animals are, so I can't really say. Um, yeah, well, what I always talk about when it comes to composition is you want to make it thick. Gotta get that thick. Get that lasagna up in here. We talked about panna cotta and panna cottas and biscotti, but we also love that lasagna. And by thick, I mean you want layers to your shot. You want foreground objects. So what would be a good foreground object? Maybe like a mobile up here. You want would it be would the mobile will be on this side? Maybe not a mobile. Um, let's just put like a room or something in here maybe another toy you want some foreground objects like this this will also help uh, focus your eye over there maybe like another maybe there's like some type of ball here like a beach ball I don't know what's in a kids room what do kids have like hammers and stuff and like chainsaws so we get some foreground elements here some foreground Whatever that is um i like to layer things up in it so this is something i never use this is something i kind of like uh wasn't doing right at the start of my career i just draw foreground elements and then i draw stuff in the background that's it but you really want to have things that show that thickness so what i'll now do is i'll have foreground elements like that and then this is good as like a medium ground element right the beach ball here is overlapping this element and then I'll have this one overlapping something else. So I would have like maybe uh, maybe a book here or something, right? So the idea is you slowly overlap a lot of things so it really shows that depth in the shot. And this book will overlap maybe like a bottle here, right? So now you have the makings of a shot and you can see where everything is in relation to it. You can show that thickness. And now this is also good having this down here right I'll show it like that and what I'd probably put over that is like something else I'd put like a book over it right or maybe like a Kleenex box maybe a Kleenex box would make more sense right so you have a Kleenex box and this covers up some other things and so you you add a bunch of layers to your shot so that it doesn't feel empty and you can show the depth of the shot having all this extra stuff in it also allows you to add character um, depending on like the type of room you might have a knife in here or a hammer but then that'd be a really different type of story a chainsaw like we're gonna take care of the baby gonna take care of that baby there you get the shovel out and the pick. But now you can see that there's a little bit more depth to the shot. There's a little bit more thickness. I'd probably add something up here. Um, there seems to be a little bit of empty space up here. This is probably where I put the mobile. Boop, boop, boop. Now it looks like the spaghetti factory with these lamps. When I put something up here. I'd probably add in like a a photo somewhere in here too just to give it a little bit well that's fine but I probably added like a photo in back of this guy up here so that you kind of focus the eye you have all these elements here you like this element these elements all these elements are kind of busy and you focus the eye where he's looking down here so yeah keep that in mind when you do your composition you want that thickness always remember thick like a lasagna or like a tiramisu or like a deep dish pizza or anything type that has a lot of layers and that's fine it's like it's pov i'm not exactly sure where the the 
other dolls are in relation to it. Are they in the box? Okay, they are in the box. So maybe instead of going to this shot, because we haven't established where these guys are yet, um, this to this makes sense, and then this to this would make sense, right? Because we saw the toys box earlier. Um, but going to this shot is a little bit confusing just because we have never seen the inside of this box. We've never seen these characters before. So you want to establish that they are in this toy box here, right? So another thing that can help that is when you show this toy box, make it make the toy box a little bit more in frame. Right now there's a lot of empty space up here where nothing's happening. So just frame it so that the toys are more in frame. Nice shot. That's fine. Um, again, we just kind of cut to... Uh, this guy that we've only seen like once so I guess that's fine uh, yeah I think that's fine you might want to add in grid lines in the background because right now it seems a little flat and I'm not exactly sure where all these characters are coming from or what I'm supposed to be seeing in the background but uh, I look like the kids room well I missed a lot yeah, chainsaw. Llama Potters. I look like the kids' room has a sword. Dope. The rocking horse, not the chainsaw. <laughs> yeah, rocking horse would be great. Some toys for skill. Yeah, having the. Just having the toys and their scale is important because. I'm not exactly sure how big everyone is, but. That might be okay. Um. This shot to this shot feels like a jump cut a little bit. And it might just be because I can't see the background, I think. Well, no, it feels like a jump cut because this person's silhouette and this person's silhouette are very similar. So keep your eye on this and then go to that. And it feels very, very much the same. That's why it feels like a jump cut. Even though they're completely different characters, it, it jumps. So... You might just need to frame tighter on him or make that person in a different spot and shrink him down a little bit. Again, it kind of jump cuts from this shot to this shot. So you need to keep that in mind when you're, you're setting up your shots to change it a little bit. I think they could hold the shot without jumping. Yeah, you, there, there are any number of ways to do these shots. So you, you don't necessarily have to go to this character. Uh, if you keep it on the shot before where they're all talking like that, just make sure it's a good setup. Or if you're going to cut in, cut in on this shot so it's a little bit closer. But just don't have the jump cut. Right now, um, it's jumping, so it's a little bit challenging. And this looks like a pan over, so that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You probably could take out this shot because it's not needed. Um, just showing him walk up in this shot would be enough. We've already established that this is he's going toward the baby monitor. Uh, if you really want to play it up, what I would do is to kind of streamline the process. I see. I've been meaning to be a stage to restage this. I just wasn't sure. How. Okay, that's yeah, not a problem. It usually takes a couple of passes to get what you really want. So this is the start frame. What I would do is then I would have it slightly truck in on this, right? Because we want we want to make this a little bit more center framed, so it'll be like a pan truck in on it, and then we can cut out. This shot, we don't need this shot. We can just go straight to this shot. This will be panel one, and then panel two. You have the bear walk in, right? You just have. Do bears have butts? Do would the bear have a butt? I don't know how to draw. I don't know how to draw legs cut without a butt. 
Oh man, that's bad. Oh, let me try draws actually. <laughs> So you have the bear walk in, right? So you have the bear walk in in this shot next to it. Damn, I can't, I can't draw a teddy bear. What is wrong with me? Being on too much an adult, I can't, I can't draw things without shape. With ah uh, ah, uh. so basically you have it walking into the shot like that. So you can cut out that other middle shot with him walking towards it like that. You can just cut to him in. Then you look the logo of this shot. He looks up. Again, you don't you don't need this shot here. I think you can go from this shot to this shot. Just have them walk around like that. I think it's a better reveal from the hand to them wide and passed out. And that's fun. That's fun. That's good. Um, I think these are still rough boards, but when you when you end up taking them closer to clean, just add a little bit more expressive posing. You might want to separate these into like one and two panels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Shake, 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 shake. Shake your rattle, shake your rattle. Boom, 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 boom. That's cool. I like that. We don't see his book until he brings it back to them. That's a good reveal. So we were talking about earlier reveals, hiding things and then revealing it. Nice. Um, just make sure to include backgrounds here because I wasn't sure where we are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is fine. That's fine. That's a good shot. Is that a pan around? Yeah, I think it's a pan around. That's fine. That's cool. It's cool. 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 But yeah, overall, I think there's a lot of good things here. Uh, there's the beginning, middle, end. I think the way you use shots is smart. I think just making sure that we know where they are in space and maybe rearranging some of the shots. But otherwise, I think it's heading in the right direction. So big thumbs up. But always um, push the acting when it comes around the couch. Have them be more sneaky. Okay. Mimi is a girl. Oh, good to know. My bad. My bad. Uh, what was this called? This is called Little Rosie. Rosie. All right, on to number four. What time is it? Oh my goodness, we got us. Pick up the pace. <laughs> oh, excuse me. It is 9.17. Oh, where'd it go? All right. Oh, that's that's pretty sweet. That all the toys are based upon. Rosie says all the toys are based upon my brother and I that they played with. Oh, nice. Uh, this is Lauren McKinley. Muffled conversation. Pepper, and then I jumped up, and knocked the bumble bear out cold. And that's how I got this rad scar. Ching, Radsgar. So cool. Yeah, so I'm pretty much the greatest adventure ever. <laughs> Great adventure. What? Wait for me. Ugh. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> you could easily avoid that scar if you had to jump straight into the fight. Yeah, but the scar makes me look cool. Ugh. If I can't change your mind with words, maybe I can with some. No, no. Please, anything but that. You're so bad. Come on, guys. I'm not that bad. I've been practicing. See? Ah! No more. Come on. Oh, that's pretty fun. Um, yeah, I like this a lot. I think it's off to a good start. Um, 
yeah, I don't have too many notes about this because I think it's pretty good. Like, yeah, there's it's funny. It's in terms of comedy boards, you don't need very crazy uh, staging. So like full shot to full shot is fine. The acting's really good. The timing is pretty funny. Um, I imagine if you need to, you could clean it up further. Like some of your drawings are pretty clean already. So I think it's just maybe a time thing that's not cleaned up right now, but it feels like a type of board I would see for a comedy show. And it, it's hitting all the beats, the acting's good. Um, I might clean up a little bit of these shots, like especially the close-ups where it's like that. I'd probably give a little bit more love to it. Uh, that's pretty funny. Oh, you did AB pose, AB pose. Oh, nice, nice. Look at that anime, guys. Look at, look at. Um, yeah, I just give a little bit more love on the close up, especially since it's a close up. That's nice. I like all of that. That's cool. But yeah, overall, great stuff. I don't really have any notes because I think it's it's there as a comedy show. I think it's good. Um, I would like to see more of it just to see more of their character, but as it stands, it's good. But toys, me, oh, how did I forget? I am ashamed of myself. I'm ashamed. Oh, you get one of these, the big thumbs up energy. Um... Yeah, the boards are sick. These are rad. This is great. Uh, Lauren says, glad you enjoy it. Yeah, I'd like to go back and clean up some of it more for sure. Dragon Scale says, maybe more colored, like just some gray in the background, just a tad. Yeah, I think maybe just a little clarity for some of the stuff, but other than that, pretty good. Pretty good. I think a good rule of thumb is a good rule of big thumbs up. <laughs> no, a good rule of thumb is if you want a joke to hit, make sure it's just very clear. Like, if you know the joke is about their expression, then make their expression drawn really clearly. If you know the joke is about something like this part where it's like the banjo, then draw it very clearly. You you want to give the love to the parts that are important. Um, for example, we don't really need. S her elbow to be perfectly drawn but this face is really important for the joke to work so that's why it's drawn with a little bit more love so just keep that in mind when cleaning up stuff all right all right on to jordan willis's amplifier oh interesting i like the pun i'm already digging it you put puns in there and i'm i'm on board it trucks out from amplifier goes to ots this person comes in walks by comes back I know you're there, Lila. Comes up, whoop, what, how? Sneak up on me doesn't work when you do it every single day. Can you play with me, please? I'm working. I guess you can wait in here, I'm almost done. Yay! Boop, 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 boop. Spin the disc, CD, whoa, pumps up. To the left, to the left. To the left, to the left. Falls down, passes out. 1.13 a.m. Oh, goes to sleep. Oh, what's gonna happen? Um, okay. I think this is just the beginning. Jordan says, one part of a long project I did for Stephanie and Ariana's class. Oh, nice. I know Stephanie, Stephanie Stein and Ariana, both talented storyboard artists. They, they might come on. They would be a good choice because they both work in feature. I've worked with Ariana on down trucks, and then I replaced Stephanie on Shira because she wanted to do something else. So, yeah, um, yeah, they're great. Maybe I'll ask them. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'll think about it. Um, okay, so this is a, a cool reveal or introduction. I don't know how I feel about this cut to this cut. It feels like one flat shot to another flat shot, and I think the confusing thing is that we see the back of this guy's head and then when we reveal him, he's off to the side already. And that feels a little bit wonky. Like I'd rather, 
if we're going to have him center stage like that, I'd rather just have like a cool reveal of him in the center and then adjust over to this shot later on. So what I mean by that is, let's get the first shot. I also like the Bruce Lee poster in the background. Very cool. Switch back to my non Batui pen and size this up a little bit. Um, okay, so first off, I would definitely add a little bit more stuff in the background because there's a lot of open space here. I know that like it's just open space, but you want to. You, this is just an opportunity to give more personality for who this guy is, right? Like we don't really know what Amplifier is. I imagine he's going to go into the video game, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, later on. So, later on so maybe have like a shelf or something like some books maybe some video games maybe there's like a a diva model or like a ryu doing a hadouken hadouken over here maybe it's like a bookshelf or whatever a uh, bookshelf holder Jordan says, no one else has caught the Bruce Lee, but you, of course I caught my boy, the dragon. He was born in the year of the dragon, born in the month of the dragon, born in the sign of the dragon. Dragon, dragon, dragon. Anyways, um, you gotta be like Bruce Lee. You gotta be like water. Who's also like Spike Spiegel, or Spike Spiegel is more like him than anything else. So this, having stuff up here will kind of like help to also bring your eye back down. Because with all this open space, your eye will drift up here. So having just stuff in here is worthwhile having. And again, like I said, it just allows you to show a personality. It allows you to tell a little bit more of the story, maybe. Whatever that might be. Um, This looks like a down shot, actually. I think it is, actually. So make it just match that. Whatever it is, make sure your background matches it. Maybe there's like a something off to the side here. I don't know. Just add stuff in. And then you might want to make this guy bigger. I need to look at the board again. So does the camera go over him or go through him? If it goes just over him, you'll probably need another pose of it being like, so this, if this is the end pose, the next pose you'll need, or the pose you need before that, is like his giant head as the camera comes over it, right? Because it kind of jumps from this shot, from this shot to this shot. We need that in-between shot between these two shots. And that might just be like, his giant noggin as a camera flies over the top of it. Keyboard, top, type, 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 type. Right. And then it comes up to like, if you want to do the, have him center framed again, that's fine. You have him center framed up here. I feel like, let me just get rid of that real quickly. You want to have him center frame, that's fine. You can even start off with his hat down and then he looks up or something. But just think of a cool way to reveal him to the audience other than just having him start off to the side of the screen like you want to have like a cool you want that cool reveal that says something about him and it pans up to him like that right and then maybe as it pans up he lifts up his head and he's like i'm a hacker or i'm a i'm a street fighter uh amplifier mm. 
Right. So you want you want that cool reveal of the character. You want to you don't want to just like throw him at the camera cuz like in the next shot he's just there, right? So we want we want like that cool pan up from him or some way to reveal him in a in a different idea. Refresh ground control. Your circuit's dead. There's something wrong. Uh on my end or on your end? I think the mic is fine. I think on my end, it seems like things are okay. Oh, okay. Coo, coo, coo. coo. Oh, shit. Um, but yeah, you want to have like a cool reveal for him, whatever that might be. And then for the shot, the next shot, have it pan over to the, the sister, right? His room seems a little bit big. Um, you might want to bring the sister closer. Uh, you might also want to add some more stuff in the background to just like fill up the room again. Um, this is an interesting shot because usually when you have someone looking at the another person, you'll either want to show their POV or something similar to their POV. Um, so in this instance, the sister is looking at him, but we cut to like a random three quarter shot and I'm not sure who that is. Uh, I think it would be helpful just for the story to have the shot then be of the brother's back, right? So we have the sister and then we want to see this is on the left side, so. Wait a minute, am I thinking about this wrong? There you go. So like, how do I keep them on the right side? Well, let's just do the shot. Right, so right now I'm thinking about like, what would the perspective be for the sister if she's looking at the brother? Um, she's obviously on the left side of the screen right now, and I'm trying to find a way to, to make that work and keep the brother on the right side of the screen. Cause like, it's kind of like a weird shift the other way, right? Like it could work like this, but it wouldn't make sense so much. Uh, it's kind of like a hard shot to keep them similar. I guess that works. I don't know if I'd want the sister in the shot. Oh no, did I put them in the same shot? I did. Um, just because it's getting a little confusing with her in there, I think. I was having a hard time reconciling, reconciling the screen position, screen position and where the brother is. So I might do this instead. I might just go to her POV, right? So she looks in and we cut to a shot of her POV. This is a girl's POV looking at his back. This is the monitor, the thing, the shelf, right? Maybe a little bit like that, a little bit more. Does that make sense? Why well, I went to a shot of the sister and not to like some random three quarter? Because we want, we want to keep some continuity to it. All right. POV purposes, yeah. You want to have, when you think about your shot choices, think about who's looking at who. Think about um, what the camera is looking at. Like, why should we be looking at that? Who is looking at it? And then that will help you set up your shots a little bit more easily. 
I, I, re I realized when I started out, I would just place a candom in random positions because I thought it would look cool. But when I started actually studying other people's films and storyboards, I realized that they chose shots where it was usually from another character's perspective or from something very similar. Or in the very few instances, it's just like a wide shot. So try to think about how the camera relates to each character. I know you're there, Lila. She comes up. What? How? I think you could, I think you can get, you can take out this shot and then I think you can take out this shot and then have her pop up in this one where he goes, I know you're there. And then she just whoop, comes up looking at the camera. This shot is fine because it's like a two shot and that works. Um, just be careful with uh, your, your perspective a little bit. Cause I think it's like, uh, it's getting a little bit flat. That's it. I'm gonna use the back of the chair as the other perspective line, right? So something like that. So something like that. All right, if that's what the perspective looks like, something like this. Uh, hey, that's great. I'm glad you took Kirk's class. Uh, but yeah, if, if you, I think perspective is just one of those things you just have to keep practicing at. If you think about the head as like a box, just have those lines match up the perspective grid. All right, so it's matching up. Even the eyes will kind of like be on their own perspective grid with, will be on the same perspective grid as the head. Nose. Right, if the eyes are here, then we know that hits right over there. Right. I used to draw my characters really boxy like this because I didn't, I wasn't very good at drawing things in three quarter or like with perspective. And I still have trouble now and then with it. So I'll have to like go back to the boxes, but it's fine. Right, the back of the chair. So that's what he looks like, right? And then the sister would be a lot, would probably be a lot closer to him. Damn, I cannot draw. Just because the perspective is so flat, I imagine you're using like a much flatter lens. Right, so, oops, yeah. So you, you can see that there's a little bit of a change. All right, it's just a it's, a, it's a slight thing, but it makes a difference when you have your characters all lined up on your same perspective grid and stuff. Um, and yeah, have her pop up in this scene. I think it'd be funny if she's like, and comes up. Because we can also have her reacting to it, seeing her expression. 
Talk, 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 it's fine. Runs away. Even this, you could just have her like sink back down like boop. So you don't have to draw her running off here. Like this seems to be like a really hard thing to draw her running off. You could just have her yay and then like boop and go back down where she came from. It'd be kind of funny. This is cool. This is cool. Um, so right now you had a lot of like flat shots. I suggest like kind of making this more of a three quarter, like just having the room be at an angle instead of just straight from the bed. Maybe do it from the corner of the bed to the other, like shoot from one corner of the room to the other corner of the room. Just to give it a little bit more variety. 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 So. If this is his room, right? He's here. The room seems a little bit big too, but whatever. It's like, that's his room. His bed is here on this wall. All that other stuff, whatever's on this side, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The camera's shooting kind of like this right now. Well, his bed seems to be really big. Or, see, it's kind of shooting like this. So it's like shooting like this, right? This is the camera shooting something like that. Maybe place the camera over here like that and shoot more like that. So, because your other shots are a little bit flat. And by flat, I mean, you just have all the walls facing directly toward the camera. You have all the people facing directly toward the camera. So it can get kind of stale and you need to kind of like switch those things up. You guys have any questions, any comments? I know things are a little bit, they're not as popping off as usual. Um, I'm still getting back into the swing of things, but you know how it is. I had a, I had a, not a long day at work, but had some serious work to get done today. I was doing some serious deep thinking Okay, this is a this is a good perfect uh, example for horizon line stuff, right? So we're talking about this at the very start of the night, where the horizon line is. Right now, the horizon line is slightly over the bed. Um, when I think about bed off of the ground, I'd say when you stand next to it, you are the bed comes up maybe to just up to your crotch, so you can fall into it. It might be a little bit lower. So if that's the case, then where where is the table stand? The table is a little bit higher than the bed, right? So in this case, the table would be somewhere like that high compared to the bed. It wouldn't be super, it wouldn't be this high off, but it would be a little bit lower. Like that. All right. And that's how you use perspective. Welcome to perspective. And then you draw on the guy, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So now that you know where the table is, um, and then the back of the room is somewhere over here, somewhere like that, right? All right, all these things are just, it's all becoming magical. Look at that per magic of perspective. Welcome to perspective. Okay, now I think I drew the, this should be a little bit closer to the wall, actually. That side, like that. Um, Right, and you can you can play with the perspective a little bit more if you want to. Uh, we could like really push it in some instances and whatnot, and we can have like more stuff here. Like, you got you have your bookshelves, like I said earlier. Right, you need the foreground, middle, middle ground, background. Add in those teddy bears from the other one here. Right, fill in this space with stuff. Fill in with whatever's, maybe that doors here or something. Oh yeah, maybe the door's open. Wait, the door's on the other side, so I'm not sure what would be here. Maybe like a bookshelf, maybe a drawer or something. Um, he's here. The sister would be around doing her thing. Some more stuff here. Right, so you just add in a bunch of stuff now. 
right? But you, you give it a little bit more depth. You want that depth to it. You, it gives you a little bit of variety from the other shot because um, your other shots were kind of flat. So this is like flat. This is good because it's like three quarter. This is good too because it was three quarter. But this shot and the first shot were a little bit flat. So you want to just give it a little bit more variety, especially on the wide shots. Having it, especially on wide shots like this, you don't want it to be too flat unless it's like for a graphical reason. Like if you stage it for a very specific like graphical idea to make it flat. Think like Wes Anderson or uh, Samurai Jack where they have like these really wide shots, but it's very staged. Like it looks like a play and the composition is really nice. Otherwise, try aim for something with a little bit more depth like this. Composition still matters, but it gives you a little bit more deepness to it. Um, Chad says, honestly, one of the things that helps me is good Googling floor plans and taking a look at apartments or setups and using them to create a location sketch. Yeah, that's really helpful. Um, it makes it easier on my brain pan, so I'm not having to think too much and I can concentrate on the camera. Yeah, that is something I do too. Like when I, when I have to like create a new room like this, Usually I'll do a floor plan like this first. Like I'll figure out where everything is. And then from there I can do shots like this and fill in what afterwards. But I need to do, I usually need to do like a floor plan of where everything sits in the room, how things are related to each other before I even start kind of like putting shots out just because it helps with my own, as you say, brain pan. Um, but yeah, this is good. All this good stuff. Good. See, like even close-up shots like this, you can probably like just twist it a little bit, right? Just give it a little bit more dimension so it's not super flat on. Um, this is good. And then I imagine something's gonna happen, but good stuff. Uh, I can't wait to see more. I can't wait to see more. No, wait. Uh, not a problem. Not a problem. Number six, career day. Chad Wilson. Sure. Yeah. Submit the. Jordan says we'll submit the rest in the coming weeks. Sure. Anytime. Hopefully I'll be here. I mean, I should be here, right? But you know, Thanksgiving, etc., etc. Ham Elementary School career dressed up dress up day. Cut to inside, off screen and the wait, it's getting a little confusing. Okay, 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 okay. Let's find the optimal ratio for this. There you go. Okay. Inside cut inside and thus concludes my 10 step plan to cure cancer usher in a new era of human prosperity and become the world fame the most famous doctor ever Ugh, please the end uh, brava brava uh, brava excellent work as usual thank you brandon next up we have a uh, leroy Allow me to prepare Mrs. Dodge. Oh, allow me to prepare Mrs. Dodge. Oh, I am ready to present Mrs. Dodge. Oh, I can't wait for this. Walks over. Thank you, Mrs. Dodge. <clears throat> Hello, class. My name is Leroy Lincoln. And when I grow up, I'll be a mild-mannered investigative reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Oh, Leroy, that's wonderful. Not at all what I expect. But secretly, I'm a strange visitor from another planet with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman. <gasps> Leroy Lincoln, what do you think you're... You see, after rigorous gynecolo gynecological research, oh God, <laughs> and many questions reluctantly answered by fourth grade health teacher Coach K, I've learned that my powers will most likely manifest after my body undergoes changes. During a strange Kryptonian biological process known as puberty. Yeah, that's right. Superpowers, people. <sighs> this is more what I expected. Powers such as super strength to change the course of mighty rivers and crunch bend. 
with my bare hands. Uh, 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 a rogue plot until I hang straight for Earth. I can unleash the fury of a thousand suns from my eyes. Wow, that's cool. As well as soar through the air, defying the laws of gravity. Have no fear, citizens. Superman is here. Mr. Lincoln, during the course of your career day presentation, you smashed poor Brandon's foam core presentation board, temporarily blinded three students with a laser pointer, and sent seven students to the nurse's office as a result of what you termed plantoidic debris, which it appears to be nothing more than but thrown rocks. What do you have to say for yourself? I'm, I'm sorry? I'm really sorry, Mrs. Dodge! Oh, oh dear. Oh, Leroy, you have to learn that your actions have consequences, and sometimes people get hurt as a result. Yes, yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember next time. That is a wonderful start, Leroy. But I have to be honest, Mrs. Dodge. Oh, no. With a pontoid that big, the casualties could have been far worse this day. All in a day's work, thanks to Superman. Oh, that's nice. That's nice and cute. I like it. I like it. It reminds me of Calvin and Hobbes a lot. Even the style, I'm like, this feels very Calvin and Hobbesy, which is not a bad thing. It's just uh, something I was paying attention to. Um. Okay. Okay. Before I critique this, Dragon Scale says, "Is it good to have sections of a book in a sequence for from in your portfolio? Is it good to have sections of a book in sequence form in your portfolio?" Uh I am not exactly sure what you mean by that question. Um, like, is it good to have boarded out sequences from a book? I think that's fine. As long as it's your own drawings and you actually make it uh, clear that, you know, they, that you took it from a book. Oh, hold on, give me a second. Give me one second. Uh, cool um okay so going forward with this i think it was really fun the story was great the acting was great i like the shot choices later on when we get to superman um there are some things i would say to be careful about the one thing that uh i noticed when and this was something that i noticed when i was doing my own storyboards a long time ago is that some of the pens in storyboard pro are a little bit kind of messy and it's because you can get a little bit of line quality to the the work but sometimes it can come off a little bit scratchy and hard to read so i would just suggest like kind of cleaning up some of these lines that you have um maybe i like how it bends back like this like into the distance maybe add in something here too um just for compositional sake then we go to a Dutch shot, and it feels a little bit strange to have a Dutch shot for this this part of the, the story because it doesn't really, like, I'm not exactly sure why. It's like, intense classroom. Like, maybe just find a different way to introduce them in the classroom or just go into the classroom. You can just go career dress up day and then just go into the classroom. And thus concludes my 10-step plan to cure cancer. Da -da 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 -da. Um, that's fine. Da, da, da. You might want to even include uh, the teacher already in the shot because we don't see her until later, and that's fine. But you could just have her in the shot because it just the, the only reason I say that is because this shot feels a little empty over here, and um, it's a little bit distracting. So you could just uh, include that in. Be careful down here with the tangent a little bit. Wait. Okay, okay. I'm getting a little confused. So, and I, I think this is why I'm getting a little confused. We have this wide shot of the class and all the people. And then we go to the kid, which is fine. Talking, talking, talking. And then we cut back to some other part of the class and we someone we haven't seen before, right? I think it would be wise to have that kid somewhere in here already. Because we never see another wide shot with the kids and with Leroy right we just see him as desk by himself and then he comes up 
but the wide shot we never get a wide shot with Leroy in it so just including him even in the back here would help establish where he is in in relation to everyone else like having him back here we can go to this shot and then when we cut back to the shot we just know where he is in relation to everyone else where he is um where the person talking is that's fine all this is good 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 talk 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 even with the teacher she kind of comes out of nowhere but it's okay like i don't think that's as big of a deal because she comes up to the front like this talk 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 this is good this is good it's funny comes up that's great um okay be careful about this he's going left to right in this shot and then this shot he's going right to left i don't think you need to do two shots just have him walk up and then turn around in this shot here right have him turn around in this shot here and then we can just and then we can just have him here in this shot we don't need to show him walking he'll already be standing still the other thing i would be careful about is so the the screen is getting a little bit close to the top of his head up here like we i don't having characters touch the top or the bottom of the screen feels very weird so you always want to give them a little bit more room you don't want those tangents also i'm not quite sure why we have like this bending floor line here i would suggest having it you can have it be tilted like that it's fine to have it touched but just be consistent about it i think i think it's bending a little too much for my taste and if you're going to do that then you also have to draw if you're going to have um if you're going to have like kind of like this more dynamic angle of him right that's kind of what you're going for right now i think right like that then you need to kind of like draw them a little bit more to that angle right you need to keep in mind that he needs to be like that too because even though it looks cartoony i imagine there's still shape and form to all these characters especially since you're drawing them with like shape and form and you're using uh less flat shots you're actually showing three dimensionality then you need to kind of like preserve that three dimensionality as you go forward unlike the the lauren mckinley one which i is comedy as well but she was keeping in that very distinct 2d uh comedy style flat shot choice which is fine i'm not saying one is worse than the other i'm just saying stylistically you kind of need to keep it consistent right so if you're going to do like crazy three core up shots make sure to have them kind of like match that perspective So even with like when you have your perspective lines like this even their eye line should kind of like match that top of the head should match it their shoulders should match it that's what perspective is there for so help you kind of draw characters as well so when i use storyboard pro um, I'll show you, but my computer, I don't think it can handle it right now because I'm running a couple of different programs to stream. But what I typically do is I'll use a, I'll just use a normal hard round brush, right? Just a cir it's basically a circle and I'll just use that to draw everything, right? I'll keep it very simple and maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller for some shots, maybe a little bit bigger, but mine don't taper very much at all. You can change the the 
you can change how much it tapers, like the minimum size and whatnot. And I don't have mine differ more than by about 50%. So it will never get less than 50% of its original size. And so it, it gives it, it keeps it pretty consistent overall. It also taught me a lot about just like making good drawings because you can't really let your line work speak for it. You just have to make really solid drawings and you can't really noodle too much or else it starts to look funny. So it, it's just, uh, it's like putting on training weights a little bit, right? Like you want to rock lead up a little bit and have a, just a fat chunky brush that is not, that takes away any beauty from your line work and use that to draw. Now, of course you found me more confident lines for one, and then two, it'll just make you noodle less. <clears throat> Minmay says, are you using the eraser a lot? I usually use the select tool to delete lines instead. When I am in Storyboard Pro, I I just use the, the, the select tool because I think the select tool is amazing. I wish every program was like that, to be honest, like where you can just select one line and delete it. I use it all the time. The other thing about Storyboard Pro is I've changed my hotkeys around, so I never have to move them from the home position. So my R key is actually, my R key, like the letter R, is actually in my delete button. So I'll use the S, the, the lasso tool on Storyboard Pro, and I'll just lasso it up, like how you, I do here, and I just press R to delete things. So, so Storyboard Pro is very good for me. I like, I found ways to maximize everything like control Z, just selecting very specific parts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I, to get back to your original question, I just use a hard circle brush like that and I don't have it differ by more than like 50%, 50% minimum at most. And so it'll give it a little bit of a taper, but not a whole lot. And it just, yeah, it just really forces you to get good at drawing because you can't really rely upon a taper to make it look good. So you have to think about shapes and you have to think about like overlap and other stuff. And anyways, that's, that's neither here nor there, but in Photoshop, Hey, I use whatever brushes I want. Like I'm, I'm starting to use, um, like this chalky brush at work and I'm loving it. It just looks, it makes all my drawings look good. And I'm just like, I know it's not a good drawing, but because it has that chalky brush, like, Hey, come on. Like everyone loves it. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like this chalky brush and oh, come on. Give me a little bit. Give me a little bit of love in Photoshop. Let me let me find a better. Nope, that's not it. It's like a pastel -y brush that's like just so perfect. I just love it. Cuz literally my drawings are garbage, but because I'm using it, it's just it's too good. It's just, it's just too good. But I know, I know I have to go back away from it. Yeah, it's kind of like this brush. Like, oh man, look at that. Look at that texture. Look at that line quality. Like, you can just draw whatever you want and it looks great. Like, let me, let me do a fake Shiyun drawing right now, right? Like Shiyun has like this elegance to his work and I'm just like, I can't do that. So I have to cheat it with like a brush. Like, tell me that, tell me that doesn't look good. That's like, oh man, oh baby. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just, it's just the brush. Woo, oh man, look at that. Anyways, but you can't do that with like, you, you really can't get away with that with these, with that in Storable Pro. Like you do that, you're just like, well, it kind of looks good, ish. Not really. <laughs> like you don't get the same type of loving as you would, I guess. But, eh, whatever. So that, I'm getting a little bit off topic. So, what? Just to get reiterate what I said. If you're going to have like a three quarter shot like that, make sure it matches for everything. Um, watch out for your like bending perspective lines. Raven says, how'd you get that brush? Oh, I just made it. I was just fooling around with some stuff and I 
just made it I was like oh it's probably like a taper brush plus this other type of brush and whatever's and you just keep fooling around with it yeah like shape dynamics initial direction roundness jitter whatever's noise you you just literally make the brush like I was just fooling around with settings and then I found something I liked that that's it like I looked at this I call it my 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 Yumi brush because if you look at my Yumi Nose stuff She uses a similar brush. I know it's not her. Like, I didn't take the brush from her because I don't know her. But I was like, how do I get a line that is slightly textured with a little bit of weight to it? And I was like, oh, I made it. And then you just have a brush, right? So you just you just look at other people's stuff and you're like, I made it. Right? You can kind of get that same feel to it. Oop. But nothing will make you draw like her. You gotta have to. You have to earn that. Hey man, that's nah. This brush is good. Maybe I should keep using this brush. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. So keep your perspective in the same kind of like same space, and watch out for your spacing on the top of the head. Talk, talk, talk. That's fine. This is great. That's good. That's really funny. That's good too. I think just giving a little bit more room to act would probably be helpful. This is really good. I like the transition. I like that. It's cool. This is really cool. That's awesome. I love it. That's so cool. Flies around. That's great too. Yeah, this is a great trans transition. Um. My suggestion for this would be have them come closer to the camera and then so that when we cut instead of having it to like cross dissolve or wipe here you just pull out so you have them come close to the camera and this is a trick a lot of people use all the time like anime and stuff the animus what you do is you have something come really close to the camera all right so that's the first pose You have his face come really, really close here, like this. So that it blocks off most of the screen. You can even have it come closer if you need to, where you want it to block off a lot of the screen. And so what happens is it comes close like that. And then in this next shot, instead of having it to like crossfade or cross dissolve or whatever, what you do is, where'd my thing go? Oh, shoot. So in this shot now, instead of having to like cross dissolve, what you do is you just truck out. So you truck out from this second shot to this shot. And this is something that, like I said, anime does a lot. This is how you get between different like perspectives, how you get between different cuts between different places without it being too evident to the to the viewer so you don't have to do like cross dissolves and stuff you don't have to do anything like that does that make sense so this is one two he comes close and then three and that is uh, a nice simple cheat for animation it's how anime like i said gets between different parts of like one takes like a lot of anime where they have like just one long shot of someone doing something if you pay attention to it it'll be someone coming really close to the camera and then going away and that'll change the background it'll change the perspective it'll change a lot of things or it'll be a way to bridge between like maybe a front shot to like a side shot or something or to like a back shot by having cat by filling the camera with things you it kind of like acts as a cut but not really and that's my top tier anime tip for the day this is a good shot, I like that, because it's from his perspective. Back to her perspective, I like that. It's all good, 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 good. I like that. It's fine. it's fine, that's good, that's good. And yeah, all this is good. Great, 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 great stuff.
I like it a lot. I think there's a nice story to it, a nice beginning, middle, and end. I think the acting's really fun. Um, just a little bit of the staging you need to worry about, but other than that, it's really good. And I imagine when you clean up, it'll be great. So big thumbs up. I really dig it. I'm digging it. Oh, oh. good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. Um, there is one more, I believe. One last one. Batui. 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 Do you guys watch? Uh, this is really off topic. Do you guys watch Kenny Beats? Um, the Cave. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Cause I I love it. I I flipping love the Cave. Kenny Beats. Whoa, Kenny. Okay, so Kenny Beats is a producer. He has this series called The Cave where he brings in rappers and they he produces a beat on the spot. So good. It is so funny. The beats are so stank. I love it. I just love But his tag is, whoa, Kenny. And there's a, a guy that comes in and raps. But when he was joking with Kenny at the start of it, he's like, he's like, bu -bu -bu -bu. B -b -b basic bitch <laughs> he just says the way he says basic is so good he's like B -b -b basic ah <laughs> uh, and now i can't stop saying it because i love it B -b 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 basic <laughs> yeah i would say if you like rap and if you like just people goofing off i would really suggest watching that show if you're not into rap that might not be your jam but the beats are still so dope they're just like oh man they're so good uh i would suggest watching the key the key episode where key comes on and raps or not key what's his name zach fox zach fox is a good episode to watch because he's really funny all right um we truck in this is begin and end by mike catcher trucking on a door missy so who's this girl i'm meeting today it's actually a boy he's 12 years old or he's 12 years old and his name's terry forster what looks down at the picture i wasn't supposed to it wasn't supposed to actually be random Ugh. when i find out who let that gross ass kid near me i'm gonna shove my foot up there and here she and here she is missy mcneely huh ah. runs over missy gets in the way Ugh. hi there i'm missy mcneely i'm so excited to meet you tommy Oh my god, like, oh my god, I'm your biggest fan, like, I love your show and your music and your face. Oh, I'm so happy, oh, I'm so happy to hear that. So, would you like a tour of the studio, a little makeover, a mani pad, a uh, haircut? Actually, if you want to know what I really want to do, I bought something just for you. <laughs> the brand new toy from Epic Fighters Magical Adventure. Oh, is that so? Sweet! What does it do? Does it talk? Pushes it. We're gonna get started and bend. Looks over. Boop. Boop, 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 boop. Did it work? Are we back? Yes, Instagram. Huh, I can't believe what we did. We, we did that. Pulls him up. Oh, thank you, Terry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Drops it. Ugh. Ew. Hey, sorry. Um, bit of advice. Floss your teeth every day. Okay, this is kind of like, I'm kind of digging the weirdness of it all. <laughs> it, it's like a cross between like uh, Rick and Morty and like total, was it Toy Adventure Island, the old Nickelodeon show? It's, it's, it's kind of nuts, but um, I think since it's more of a comedy style, I would think the flatter shots are fine it's not so bad one thing i would suggest is watch watch your usage of a mirror um i would not really recommend having a mirror in a shot for too long just because unlike a real mirror you just you don't have to draw the drawing twice you could just do whatever you want in front of a mirror and the mirror just plays back to you in animation if you have a mirror you have to literally draw the drawing twice and like this doesn't work right you wouldn't actually see her face in the mirror here really you would see the back side of her head because she's facing away from the mirror so 
when you have mirrors in your storyboards or in any shot for that matter that's in animation it just doubles the amount of work you have to do and it doesn't really give you much in terms of story return unless you are satoshi Kon and you make your whole movie about mirrors and you're just a badass because he's satoshi Kon and just a genius but right you wouldn't see the you wouldn't see the front of her face you'd see the back of her head and you would have like this weird arm thing up here and so you would have to redraw and reanimate everything but from a different perspective and it doesn't really give you anything so if you have a mirror try to like not be able to see into it that's why I think a lot of times people will shoot things from the side or from like a three quarter or even from the mirror's perspective. So you don't actually have to show it. Like you could have the mirror be this. Not like that's the side of the mirror, right? This is like a side of the mirror, right? She's looking at it. Doing her lipstick. And it gets the same idea across. It's someone in front of a mirror doing something, talking. And you don't even have to show the rest of the mirror. Right? We get the idea. We get the idea. It's a cool shot. It works. You don't have to do all this other crazy stuff for it. Um, going forward, why is this not showing up? Okay, there you go. Talk, talk, talk. It wasn't supposed to. Um, be careful in this shot. I think the perspective is getting a little wonky. You might just want to go back to a flat shot. I think you've been using a lot of, since it's a comedy one that I talked, like I, I said, you can just do more flat shots. You don't have to make it crazy 3D or like three quarter all the time. Like it's fine. Um, that is fine. I think the reveal of him could use a little bit more. You could probably give him a little bit more acting when he comes in or whatever, because you do have a nice reveal of it panning down. It's just that, Let's see some more character. Let's give him more character. Runs in. This is funny. Bonk. Hits it. That's funny. Uh, I would like to see him like fall back down or react to getting hit for some reason. That's cool. Talk, talk, talk. Um, I'd also like to see a two shot at some point because we never see the two of them interacting in the same shot together. They're always like separated by this guy and maybe that's a stylistic choice but at some point I would like to see a uh, shot with both of them in it just so we have a spatial relationship. Right, like that would be a good shot. When she hands him the, when when Terry hands Missy the toy, that would be a good time to see both of them in the same shot. Right, just widen out this one a little bit more. Or maybe shrink the other one. Shrink it down, shrink it, shrink it, shrink it, shrink it down, shrink it down, shrink it down. Let's add in Terry. Where's Terry at? T -t 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 Terry. Terry, like when we do it like this, Terry, Terry, Terry. Right, so let's get a two shot of them in there. Maybe shrink it a little bit more like that. That way we can kind of see where they are in relation to each other. We know how they, where they are spatially. Otherwise, when it's just shot to shot to shot to shot like that, it gets a little bit confusing and can get kind of boring for the audience. So you want to break it up by having them interact in some shots together. Hey, it's me, Terry. I'm a nerdy kid. I got a action figure in my back pocket and some. Hmm. I feel like there's a joke in there. Um. But yeah, have them have them in the same shot. Cool. Same shot. Uh. Okay. Keep going. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Yeah. And so at this point, when they're all reacting, it'd be nice to have them in a wide shot, all reacting together. Yeah. Right there. Oh, no, that's, I think how you have it is fine, actually. I take it back. Boop. That's funny. Boop. Uh, I kind of wish there was more to the story because I'm not quite sure what happened, but the rest of this is pretty funny and it's kind of like a weird, like I said, like Rick and Morty type thing. But other than that, fun stuff. I think maybe a little bit of Terry acting early on, but it's good. It's good. Ha <laughs> ha. Chad said, yes, that is an action figure in my pocket. And yes, I'm happy to see it. Um, so that sums up everything from tonight. It is 10.20. We went a little bit over time, but 
do you guys have any questions? Do you guys have anything you want me to clear up a little bit more? Um, I think there's some really good stuff. I think it was a nice variety of stuff that we looked at tonight, from comedy to some action to to um, some more heartwarming stuff, some serious stuff. There, there's a lot of good stuff all around. So I hope there's something for everyone here, right? But do you guys have any questions? You want me to go over anything really quickly? We've been talking together for the last two and a half hours. So I'm sure you guys had something in mind. Hmm. You guys have any questions about Pana Coda, uh, banana cream pie, you know, mukbang, how to deal with like spicy food, um, how to eat more, you know, staying healthy, anything really. We're just going to wrap it up soon, if nothing else. Because, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I guess no questions. Nothing going on. I'm going to pull up the joke book. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's co What was that for Halloween? Oh, man. What was that for Halloween? I was... I was actually going to dress up as it tonight, but I was like, ah, I'm too lazy. I was this guy who was like, is that a pigeon? Is that a pigeon? Here, let me see if I can pull up a picture. There you go. I don't know if you can see it, but... Oh. Well, uh, focus, focus. It's not focusing. Anyways, I was that guy. I was the, I was the, the internet meme. Is this a pigeon? Uh, what chat says what's your go-to drink to cool things off the off after spicy uh, i'm not a big fan of milk just because it i don't think drinking milk and spicy is very good it just cools off the mouth but i don't think it's very good internally so i'd probably do like tea i'm always a big tea person if, if anything's wrong with my stomach tea like and i'm not talking like sweet tea i'm talking like just straight up green tea you know some jasmine maybe if you want to get some if you're really serious get some poor pu dash e r h it's like a fermented tea that's like good for your stomach and digestion um yeah so i would definitely go tea it might be spicy in the mouth but at least it's not milk i feel like once i start drinking milk and spice it like curls in my stomach and it's just like oh no the 9 30s are coming uh awesome 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 well it looks like no one has any more questions so we're going to wrap up tonight's stream thank you guys for coming out as usual i really appreciate you sharing your work with me I hope I was able to help um, teach you guys something and hope that it made sense. We will do this next week, Tuesday. And let me upload the the story. Let me upload all my notes from tonight onto, this, onto the same place where you guys dropped off your work. Ah, uh, shoot. Hold on a second. Let me open up the, the, the Gmails. Uh, oh no, what, enter, and then on Friday, I'll have a friend over, and we're going to play the Pokemon Detective game again, I think that game is a lot of fun, uh, we played it with Rico and Arthur last week, and if you haven't seen it, it's just, at least I had fun, and I think they had fun too, like, it was just a good time, I kind of like having to come up with Pokemon again, I think that's always a good time. It's just so silly. It's just Pokemon are so weird and it's just so much fun to draw. All right, the storyboards are the notes are up in the same folder where he dropped it or it's uploading right now. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I did have a question. Did it? This is a question for you guys. Who goes to SCAD? I saw someone. I, I was tagged in someone's like presentation, and I, I didn't even know that was a thing. I just like, oh, that's interesting. Um, here's a link to the the storyboards from tonight, or not the story, the notes from tonight. But yeah, someone from SCAD tagged me in like a presentation, and I wasn't sure what the presentation was for. Um, it was nice, but I was just like, I don't. How did you find me? I guess <laughs> I don't know. Anyways. Um, joke time. This is good. This is really good. Um, what do swamp creatures eat for dessert? What do swamp creatures eat for dessert? They eat marshmallows. Get it? Marshmallows. <laughs> Alright, guys. Um, thank you for coming out. I'll see you guys next week or I'll see you guys on Friday. If you're here for the Friday stream, it's just us goofing off. Otherwise I'll see you on Tuesday. Take care. Bye-bye.